my, my take on that, just uh, my, 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 my larger take on that, if I may interpolate something, I may be completely wrong here, but my larger take on that was that a lot of the work that one reads in evolutionary biology these days actually does have, so it'd be interesting to get into the, on your last point, for example, about conflict and cooperation. There are some new papers emerging, which are rather interesting ones about, uh, in neuroeconomics, about group uh, activity and so on and so forth, that I think that might be interesting to go into, but I'm not sure if that is a bridge there or whether there's a chasm, and perhaps if you could uh, talk. Um, I guess the most uh, relevant thing I could say uh, to, to uh your interesting comments uh, is that um, uh, in the trenches, in some sense, we need to uh, um, persuade um, a certain fraction. You've you've seen the statistics about uh, you know uh, the, uh, the extent to which Americans are committed to um, or believe in evolution, so to speak, or are. Um, who supported it as an accurate picture. And um, certainly what I've seen a lot is that there's a huge middle zone. There are some people who are creationists, but a, a great many of the people who are expressing skepticism about evolution are, would not identify themselves as creationists. They actually need an account that they can connect with. and. And so the, the reason for telling uh, what we know to be scientifically true about evolution in as many uh, dialects as possible is to um, persuade, is to help persuade a diverse community of citizens about this. And they're coming from different points of view. And some of them would be completely convinced by the facts of the matter, but others recoil at the almost techie type of um, presentation of the, of the facts, which is sometimes made. And that's the reason for poetry. Yeah. I can see that. And it, it, it talks back to, I think, something that Michael Shermer was saying this morning about um, if you're, if, it depends on what, you, what you're trying to achieve. And if, you, if what you're trying to achieve is to win over the hearts and minds of that large um, religious m majority of the American population, then you've possibly got a point that that you want to woo them in using the, the what using the sort of language that, that they understand. So I think this is probably a matter of political tactics, and I can see that if if one's political aim is to say win the battle over the teaching of evolution in schools, then the sort of tactical, but I mean, in your case, I'm not sure it's, it's tactical. I mean, I think you really believe it, but, but I mean, there are, there are other people who, who, who feel that, that, that we should be conciliatory, and um, I think Michael Shermer called it making nice. Um, and I think that there is something to be said for that, and I'm genuinely uncertain about what I feel, because I, I can see the political benefits of winning that particular battle. I do see it as a battle rather than a war. I mean, I, I think it's a skirmish. And I mean, I'm actually much more interested in the, in, the, in the deep truths about the universe. Is there, as a matter of fact, a supernatural intelligence in the universe? And um, that's, the, that's the war that I'm really, really interested in. And to me, the evolution creation battle is a skirmish. Um, but I, I can e easily be persuaded that, that political, um, it, it, it's a bit like saying, should you, should you vote Democrat or, or vote um, um, I don't, Green or, 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 some, or something? Um, and, and, you know, it's the, it's the lesser of two evils ar ar argument. But you don't even think it's evil. I mean, you're, you're, um, Well, no, I mean, I, I certainly don't think no. that any choice of imagery is, in an, it is evil if it's still accurate. Well, but, but it, well, okay, I mean, I, I don't yeah. think it's accurate, but, but, but um, um, this, could, could I just inter interpolate something? This, this, uh, this is actually a, a large pivotal point in, in many of the pieces that one has been reading recently, the, the, the whole notion of whether, um, whether it makes sense to take uh, um, the kind of position that you've taken in, in the God hypothesis or, or the make nice thing, whether in fact it, it does harm to the overall 
community um, to um, <coughs> polarize them, whereas I, I think that what you, you would be saying is that they're not being, you're not seeking to polarize them as such, you're just hoping that they'll actually explore the, uh, the evidence with, with, with more in, intense yeah, focus. Yeah, I mean, you have to open the door, I think, and, and I think that the choice of imagery and the choice of language is, is important to get the door open. And um, I uh, would agree with you uh, completely on the issue of uh, uh, pursuing a critical analysis of religion. I don't think that religious thought and religious doctrine should, should be any less uh, um, subject to scrutiny. And, um, but what I would say where you may not agree is that, that that is a good case for actually reading the Bible and making sure that you can check up on people who claim that there is stuff in the Bible that isn't actually there. Do, do any of the members of the audience, have, I mean, do you have any issue? Francisco, do you want to say something on this? You want me to do it from here? Yeah, okay. Well, I was not planning to say something, but you ask and name me. Uh, so I'll get up. I, I got up. Yeah, Francisco Ayala, University of California, Irvine. Um, uh, I was frankly very disappointed with both talks. Uh, I happened to be speaking to two good friends of many years. I think we reached at least 24 years since 82 when we were jointly celebrating the centenary of Darwin at Cambridge and uh, we were co authors of a joint book with others as well. And I don't know whether it's earlier or later, where at least once and maybe twice I wrote blurbs for your books, uh, commenting on how the books, uh, how good they were and they were, and your books are superb. Um, John, I think I met her when she was a graduate student at Harvard, and I was a young assistant professor at Rockefeller University and gave to give a seminar there, and then we went together for lunch. If my memory is correct, I think Ed Wilson had invited me to give that seminar. I was very proud addressing the Department of Biology at, at, at Harvard when I was an assistant professor. And I have seen John more often than I have seen Richard. I think, John, you have presented the picture of science, which is a caricature. I, I mean, you bring up estrogen, and, and there are many other things which are, uh, are wrong with uh, conclusions or presumed conclusions of science, which are not very, stab very established, but there are lots of knowledge that I think is well established to the extent that science can establish things. We all yeah. accept that it may very well be that the basic assumptions of Newtonian mechanics are wrong, and, and Einstein proved that. But Newtonian mechanics works, and by and large, it's true knowledge. And I think in evolutionary biology, we both are practitioners of that, to you more the yeah. more ecological and behavioral side, more the genetic side. I think we have a lot of very good knowledge, very ba basic, and very useful to humankind. So at least the way your message came to me, um, I, I, I was disappointed. It seems to me that you were trying to put down science and that doesn't go anywhere. Um, I know how Richard feels about uh, matters of religion. There are, uh, I could agree with you in many things, which I will not make explicit here, uh, but we cannot ignore religion, Richard. People, I mean, there are six billion people in the world, and if we think that we are going to persuade them to live a rational life based on scientific knowledge, um, we, we not, are not only dreaming, we, we just, I mean, it's such an illusion. It's been like believing in the, in, in the fairy good mother, you know, some, some of the, something like that. I mean, people need to find meaning and purpose in life, and they find meaning and purpose in religion. Now, if the religion comes to them very much in the form of, you can call it indoctrination, it can be education in the family and otherwise in the schools, but this allows the billions of people in the world to live a life which makes sense. They can put up with the difficulties of life and with the hunger and disease and the like. And I certainly don't want to take that away from them. Uh, I, for one, would rather see that 7% of members of the Academy of Sciences, my colleagues, uh, get, who still seem to express faith in ways that I would not say, share, but I certainly don't want to take religion away from the people. I, it's just uh, it's a much, much too valuable for them and for 
finding meaning out of the world. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't if, if, if I were at somebody's deathbed and they had a deep religious faith, I wouldn't try to disabuse them. Um, I, so I'm, I, I, don't ne I don't necessarily want to take away what people have from, from religion. I was surprised that Steven Weinberg seemed to, to be almost expressing a kind of lament on his own behalf for the loss of religion. That, that really did surprise me. Um, but I, I can see and, of course, acknowledge that a lot of people do uh, get something from it. I was surprised he, he seemed to, I don't believe he does. Um, and I wanted to disclaim any sympathy with that point of view. Uh, w when I've been to, for example, religious and secular funerals, um, some people say, oh, well, what are you going to do? How are we going to bury our dead if we don't, if we don't have have religion. I don't know what your experience is, but for me, by far the most moving funeral services I've ever been to have been wholly non-religious, where they consist of eulogies for the dead person, readings of poetry, the favorite poetry of the dead person, the favorite music of the dead person, um, people reminiscing about the dead person. When there are prayers as well, you just start looking at your watch and waiting for the next, for the next eulogy. My, my wife says that, that it's the prayers that are the only thing that keep her going because because if otherwise she'd be weeping all the time with she's so so um, moved by the by the eulogies and the and the poetry and things like that i i think it's not a difficult task to devise alternatives to at least some of the rites and rituals that religion provides certainly funerals certainly marriages um, music well um, I, i've already said something about that um, but I, I do a, a, agree with Professor Ayala that um, th no doubt there are many people who, who need, need religion and far be it from me to sort of pull the rug from under their, their feet. If they don't want to read my book, then they're welcome not to. Um, and uh, Francisco, thanks so much for your comment. And uh, may maybe this will go a little ways to... Uh, um, alleviating your disappointment. And I'm obviously not saying that all of science or even much of science is incorrect, but at any one time, some of it is. And I think we as scientists, and this is my point, need to be sensitive to people, to lay people who can't tell which is correct. And so they then are put in the position of having to uh, listen to authorities or and the authorities are usually chosen by the media and it's in this context that some of the skepticism about science arises and especially when it's delivered as uh, medical prescriptions that they follow that they then have to go back on and not do later so I think from an educational point of view which and I know you're committed to science education I think it would help if we were more sensitive to um, the inability of the general public to discern where the science is correct and where it isn't. And so to cut them a little slack uh, on this when they do doubt good science and that we should go the extra mile to try to uh, explain what we are actually convinced of in terms which can reach different constituencies.